Chapter 11 And as for me, in the first year of Darius the Mede, I stood up to be a supporter and a stronghold unto him. And now will I declare unto you the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And when he is waxed strong through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece. And a mighty king shall stand up, that shall rule with great dominion, and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, but not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, wherewith he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for others beside those. And the kingdom of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion. His dominion shall be great dominion. And at the end of years they shall join themselves together. And the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the strength of her arm, neither shall he stand, nor his arm. But she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and they that begot her, and he that obtained her, in those times. But one of the shoots of her roots shall stand up in his place, and shall come in, and shall come unto the army, and shall enter into the stronghold of the king of the north, and shall deal with them, and shall prevail, and also their gods, and their molten images, and with their precious vessels of silver and gold shall he bring into captivity into Egypt, and he shall desist some years from the king of north, and he shall come into the kingdom of the king of the south, but he shall return into his own land, and his sons shall stir themselves up, and shall assemble a multitude of great forces, and he shall come on, and overflow as he passes through, and he shall return and stir himself up even to his stronghold. And the king of the south shall be moved with Cholor, and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. And he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand, and the multitude shall be carried away, and his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down tens of thousands, but he shall not prevail. For the king of the north shall again set forth a multitude, greater than the former, and he shall come on at the end of the times, even of years, with a great army, and with much substance, and those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, also the children of the violent among your people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. And the king of the north shall come and cast up a mound and take a well-fortified city, and the arms of the south shall not withstand, and as for his chosen people there shall be no strength in them to withstand. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the beauteous land, and in his hand shall be extermination. And he shall set his face to come with the strength of his whole kingdom. But he shall make an agreement with him, and he shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it. But it shall not stand, neither be for him. After this shall he set his face unto the isles, and shall take many. But a captain shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Yes, he shall cause his own reproach to return upon him. Then shall he turn his face toward the strongholds of his own land. But he shall stumble and fall and shall not be found. Then shall stand up in his place one that shall cause an exactor to pass through the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. And his place shall stand up a contemptible person upon whom had not been conferred the majesty of the kingdom. But he shall come in time of security, and shall obtain the kingdom by blandishments. And the arms of the flood shall be swept away from before him, and he shall be broken, yes, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall be worked deceitfully, and he shall come up and become strong with a little nation. In time of security he shall come even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them prey and spoil and substance, yes, he shall devise his devices against fortresses, but only until the time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall stir himself up to battle with a great and mighty army. 
but he shall not stand, for they shall devise devices against him. Yes, they that eat of his food shall destroy him, and his army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. And as for both these kings, their hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for the end remaineth yet for the time appointed. And he shall return to his own land with great substance, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do his pleasure, and return to his own land. And at the time appointed he shall return, and come into the south, but it shall not be in the latter time as it was in the former. For ships of Katim shall come against him, and he shall be cowed, and he shall return and have indignation against the holy covenant, and shall do his pleasure, and shall return and have regard unto them that forsake the holy covenant. And the arms shall stand on his part, and they shall profane the sanctuary, even the stronghold, and shall take away the continual burnt offering, and they shall set up the detestable thing that causes a palmet. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by blandishments. But the people that know their God shall show strength and prevail. And they that are wise among the people shall cause the many to understand Yet shall they stumble by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall stumble, they shall be helped with a little help, but many shall join themselves unto them with blandishments. And some of them that are wise shall stumble, to refine among them, and to purify, and to make white, even to the time of the end, for it is yet for the time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself, magnify himself above every god. And he shall speak strange things against the god of gods. And he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that which is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers. And neither the desire of women nor any god shall he regard. For he shall magnify himself above all. But in his place shall he honor the God of strongholds, and the God whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and the precious stones and costly things. And he shall deal with the strongest fortresses, with the help of a foreign God, whom he shall acknowledge, shall increase glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for a price. And at that time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow as he passes through. He shall enter also into the beauteous land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall be delivered out of his hand, Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall fright him. And he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the beauteous holy mountain. And he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. And we're going to remember this. This is taking place in the third year of Cyrus, as, we're going to, as we recall from yesterday in the last chapter. The Cyrus is that one who has the furnace, and this is even this furnace of affliction, this Persian he's, this of Persia, and this is that king of Persia, or this Molech of splendor. There came this word, and we're going to find out. It was a vision. Daniel understood of, these, of the kings uh, that was given to him. And this, we went through that vision of these things that are, these things that are done. The word had come to Daniel. Uh, the law had touched his lips, the, and God had given him understanding to know these, the, the, the sum of these visions. But it was not to all happen in Daniel's time, as we'll find out. This was not to happen in Daniel's time. It was a vision, even a time and a vision for even that end period, because there did still remain a certain vision, a certain hope left for that period. And in verse 21, Gabriel was speaking. 
to Daniel and uh, these that were there with him who were with Daniel in this vision. And he said, However, I will declare unto you that which is inscribed in the writings of the truth. And there's none that held with him, or there was none that understood him, but except for Michael, your prince. And that's where we left off. And then we'll be, and that's where we'll be picking up in verse 1. As for me, in the first year of Darius the Mede, I stood up to be a supporter and a stronghold unto him. And we remember Darius. In the first year of Darius, and that was in the beginning of the greater understanding. See, Darius was means the Lord. He is the Mede, that one who was supported, or the Mede, or that those of the middle, those of the middle, and this is that area that's a place that's raised up. And he would stand as a supporter and as a stronghold unto him too. And now, will I declare unto you the truth? Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And when he has waxed strong through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece. And now, this, this declare unto you the truth. And this, this is what was going on during this period of Daniel, actually, just shortly thereafter to follow. We'll find out these kings of Persia. There's going to be a great war, that which Daniel confirmed at the last time that there was. And there was great war going on even at that time. See, we'll find out that Daniel, Persia was taken over. And Persia was going to take over and they was going to make their move on Greece according to the prophecies. And we're going to find out. We're going to follow it as we go through the timeline. But the, the overall understanding arrives in the end and the end of the matter we'll find out is not going to change and and we're going to find out there's three kings in persia these three kings and it's going to be to complete these kings in persia and that's those kings of splendor those molex of splendor and that's all the wonderfulness that's all the greatness the beauty the wonderful all the pleasantness of it and it's and but the fourth shall be far richer than them all the fourth because we'll find out see it's that portion of the work of god and when he gets strong, when he's got his money and all of his army together, we'll find out. He shall come up against the realm of Greece, and that's those of drunkenness. Those of drunkenness. Those who suffer from the effects of wine. The word is your bond. Three. And a mighty king shall stand up, that shall rule with a great dominion and do according to his will. And this mighty king that shall stand up, this one who's going to rule, his dominion's going to be great. And he's, do, he's going to do as he wants for and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, and he shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, but not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion wherewith he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for others besides those. And so his kingdom gets broke. His kingdom's broken, and it's divided, split in half. This is nothing new. God does this quite often, see. And he did this to Israel, and he's going to do this to all the nations of the earth. See, and he divided it. Toward the four winds of heaven. And these four, anytime we see four, it's the work of God. These winds, these winds are that which bloweth, blow across the earth. It's, it's time, it's time. It's all uh, these metaphors and these similitudes that God uses. And even these, these periods, are these, this that bloweth the crossed understanding, see. And these the periods, these times that we got to make witness. But it's not going to be for his posterity. These, these the fact that his kingdom's broken or it's not going to be for his good it's not going to do them any good and we'll find out not according to his dominion wherewith he ruled or that area wherewith he had this dominion God gives dominion it's all the kingdom of God he set the kings up in dominion in the beginning and give them dominion to rule in righteousness and justice because the people had turned from God five and the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion, and his dominion shall be great dominion. And this king of the south, south is that, south is dry, arid, parched. It means the parched land. It's that place that God parched a long time ago. And that's what it is. You see, we can witness that. When we look south, we witness. And it shall be strong, and one of his princes, and the beginning of his rulers, and these, these are the south, and we could fit this anywhere the shoe will go on the foot, see. And he shall be strong above his dominion, have dominion, his dominion shall be great dominion. 
See, but and and we'll find out because God gives dominion. We got to keep that in mind. See, God gives dominion. These are men; they're not gods. Six, and at the end of years they shall join themselves together, and the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the strength of the, her arm; neither shall he stand nor his arm. But she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and they that begot her, and he that obtained her in those times. And at the end of years, and at that, at that latter portion of the greater understandings, they shall join themselves together. They try. And we, we have this. It's all, all this is documented. And they try to hold on to what's left. And this daughter, this daughter, the, a daughter is that which went forth from her mother. And it's the understanding, see. It's the understanding of her father that went forth to bring fruit unto. And the, she is the daughter of the king, this Molech of the south. And that's that place we can witness. She'll come to the king of the north and he is the Molech of the north, that of judgment, to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the strength. And she, it's that feminine sense. See, the beauty of it is not going to retain the strength of the, of the arm. And that is this, well, an arm is the strength, but it, it's the power. It's that which gives us the power in our works. Neither shall he stand, and that is the masculine, this king, that Molech of judgment, because we'll find out his arm nor his his strength these these uh, powers of his they shall be given up and, and they that brought her they that brought this pleasantness and all this goodness and all this beauty and they that begot her those that give birth to her those that brought it forth and he that obtained her he that took it in uh, and in those times see they, they ain't gonna stand we'll find out in the end it's all it's all one vision in the end God make an example to the very end. But one of the shoots of her roots shall stand up in his place and shall become unto the army and shall come unto the army and shall enter into the stronghold of the king of the north and shall deal with them and shall prevail. But one of her shoots, or one of her children, of her roots, shall stand in his place. He shall come unto the army and shall enter into the stronghold of the king of the north and shall deal with them and shall prevail. And she'll come into the door. That place of judgment, we're going to find out. A lot of people try to put this shoe in time and give it understanding. But, and we can find out in, in retrospect, see, how this does go. I mean, hey. And also their gods with their molten images and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold. Shall he bring into captivity into Egypt and he shall desist some years from the king of the north. And also they're not a god's. See, these would be their not a gods, these molten images. These are things that they melt down in a fire and they pour it out into a mold. And see, it makes these little images, these imaginations, I should call them, of men. And that's what they amount to. If you can see it, I wouldn't believe it. And with their precious vessels, these silver and gold, these silver and gold, uh, that's what's passed through the fire. That, that's what that molten image is, see, it represents. Because that's what they can cause them to pass through a fire another generation. They sell their souls of gold. These, that, that's that belongs to God, see. They shall bring into captivity into Egypt this place of pits, the place of snares, that place God brought the children of Israel out of a long time ago. God made an example of that place a long time ago. That is that parched land. That place God made an example of, see? That place of holes, snares, pits, crypts, graves, whatever you want to call it. It's whatever you want to call it. It's where the laws of men ruled. And they caused the people to err under their not a God. See, it's all the same thing. These would all be the, the greater understandings of it. But he will desist there. He will not. He ain't going to make war with the king of the north for a while, these years, and even in the greater understandings. He shall... 9. He shall come into the kingdom of the king of the south, but he shall return into his own land. But the king of the north shall come against him of judgment, shall come against that place of witness. See, but he will return into his own land. 10. And his sons shall stir themselves up and all assemble the multitude of great forces. He shall come on and overflow as he passes through, and he shall return, stir himself up even to his stronghold. And his sons shall stir themselves up, these that come forth from him. 
these would be his sons, these princes, these rulers. They shall assemble a great multitude of forces, uh, this army. And he shall come on and overflow as he passes through. He shall stir himself up even to his stronghold. And we're going to find out this stronghold. It's a stronghold of armies and battles and these things of flesh and men understand. See, it God that does cause the seas to roar. 11. And the king of the south shall be moved with choler, and it shall come forth to fight with him, even the king of the north. And he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. This king of the south, this king of uh, that dry parched land, shall be moved with choler, that great anger. He shall come forth to fight against him with the king of the north. We remember that great choler to come, that great anger where the, the he goat smote the ram. That, that would be that king of the north. And he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. This great multitude that's given to his hand, this great army, all these that are given over, twelve, and the multitude shall be carried away, and his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down tens of thousands, but he shall not prevail. And the multitude shall be carried away. There's, there's a great captivity here, see. A great captivity, a great carrying away, and his heart shall be lifted up. His understandings even that are lifted up. He shall be able to cast down tens of thousands. Tens, that's the law, see, and the laws of fulfillment even. He should, but he shall not prevail. Because, see, in the end we'll find out. In the end we'll find out, see, the judgment will stand. We don't know that. Thirteen, and the king of the north shall again set forth a multitude greater than the former. And he shall come on at the end of the times, even of the years. With a great army and with such, and with much substance, and the king of the north, that's one of judgment. Again, once again, he's going to set forth this great army, this great multitude, greater than the former, more more larger armies than he ever come before with it. These should come on at the end, and this is at the latter portion of these times, this period. See, that's that period. Even of years, uh, even of them greater understandings, where God was using for a witness. God was using it as a witness once again with a great army and with much substance they come. 14, and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the children of the violent among your people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. And in those times, during those periods, see, that's what we're talking about. We're getting down now toward the end. We, All that... The, happens before really has little regard to what's going to happen actually in the end see and in the end and and that decision see that comes in the end in those times that's that period they shall stand up even against the king of the south that's that king of the parched place that place that's going to make the witness that parched place god dried up before even the children the children are those that come forth from the violent see those that come forth from the violent among your people and what talking about He's talking to Daniel. See, he's talking to Daniel and the violent among Daniel's people, those the judge of the mighty one. Those uh, of Judah shall lift themselves up to establish this vision, but they shall stumble. And those even of, of Judah that lift themselves up to try to establish this vision, this these perceptions of that time, we'll find out. They're just going to stumble. See, those are the ones God give over with. We'll, 15 and the, and the king of the north shall come and cast up a mound and take a well fortified city and the arms of the south shall not withstand and as for his chosen people there shall be no strength in them to withstand and this king of the north he shall come this once again this one from the north is God using him as judgment he shall come and cast up a mound take up a, a defensive position that's what a mound is a, a defensive position and take a well-fortified city, a place that is fortified. It has wall. It has guard. That's what a city is. And the arms of the south shall not withstand. And as for his chosen people, there shall be no strength in them to withstand. And his arms, his strength, his his uh, ability to do, his uh, power of the south, that place of the parts shall... Notwithstanding, he's going to be able to uh, to hold back against them. 
and his chosen people, those that these of strength, see, and Judah was the southern uh, country, uh, and Israel was the north, see, and even then, God make an example, the south, the north, the north, and the south, God, uh, and that, uh, and even in Egypt, north, south, we, this is a common uh, example God used throughout, is this of judgment, this we can witness, 16, but he that comes against him shall do according to his own will. None shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the beauteous land, and his hand shall be extermination. But this one who's going to come against him shall do according to his own will. He's going to do as he wants, see. We're going to find out once again. God prospering, God using it as judgment. Hey, none, none shall stand before him. None can stand before his armies because God prospering, see. He shall stand in the beauteous land. Even in that beautiful land. That's that holy land. That's the hallowed land. That's that place where it's at. That's what we're talking about, Israel. And in his hand, his works, shall be extermination. Shall be extermination, see, because that's that period. That's that time of the end, see, where that extermination, that was determined. See, we remember that even in the prophecies. 18. And he shall set his face to come with the strength of his whole kingdom. But shall make an agreement with him, and he shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it. But it shall not stand, neither be for him. He shall set his face to come with his whole kingdom, this whole dominion that he's given. Uh, but it, but shall make an agreement with him. This They shall try to make an agreement with him. And we'll find out this agreement, this little covenant they make in the end that's not going to stand. Neither be for him it's 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 not going to be to his favor 18 after this shall he set his face unto the isles and shall take many but a captain shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease yes he shall cause his own reproach to return upon him and after this he shall set his face these things that he's made plain unto the isles these these isolated areas these isles represent these islands these little Isles, these isolated places in the sea, these uh, that great understanding. He shall take many, but a captain, a ruler, he shall cause his reproach that he offered by him. This this reproach, and we're going to find out what this reproach is. This thing that causes a palm to cease. He's, and he's going to cause his reproach to return upon him. Nineteen. That's his own embarrassment. Nineteen. Then shall he turn his face toward the strongholds of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and shall not be found. He's going to stumble and fall. He shall not be found any more. This, this, this one who came, he thought to take over. We'll find out. This one, uh, according to the other visions, this anointed one, this one who was anointed for this purpose. 20. Then shall stand up in his place one that shall cause an exactor to pass through the glory of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And that would be that other ruler that would stand up in fierce continence, that this exactor, this exactor, to pass through the glory of the kingdom, this glory, and this glory is like the majesty to go through uh, the kingdom, because what he's doing is the exactor, this exactor, this one who causes taxation, uh, uh, someone who brings taxation upon uh, the glory of the kingdom. He, he is setting a price, see, on it. He is going to set a price on this kingdom. And we remember that from the prophecies This that's weighed out. See, it's been weighed out. It's even like a price that, that's, that's been weighed out. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, and not with anger nor in battle. We'll find out. The work of God does it. 21. And in his place shall stand up a contemptible person upon whom had not been conferred the majesty of the kingdom, but he shall come in time of security and shall obtain the kingdom by blandishments. And in his place shall stand up this this contemptible, this one who uh, is contemptible, or causes contempt, uh, this person, this in, uh, 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 an individual or a persona upon whom had not been conferred the majesty of the kingdom. He has not been given the, the, the rule of the kingdom. But he shall in a time of security and in a period of security, a period of, of well. There's wellness in the land. So we'll find this wellness, this goodness that's in the land. He shall obtain the kingdom 
by blandishments, by flatteries, and these flatteries would be to join the kingdom together, to bring peace in the kingdom with these flatteries and these blandishments. And these blandishments are promises of booty, uh, but it's going to be lies, 22. And the arms of the flood shall be swept away from before him, and, and shall be broken, yes, also the prince of the covenant. The arms of the flood shall be swept away from before him. These, these, these arms, these uh, strengths in the abilities, uh, this strong power shall be swept away from before him. This, this is like a flood. Even that flood we've heard of at the end, see, that flood, it's going to be understanding coming through. Yes, also this prince of covenant, we're going to find out, but the prince of the covenant, this prince of the covenant, this ruler of the covenant, is is broken. We'll find out because God's covenant is put down, and He is going to come and rule over this covenant, even the covenant that God gave in the beginning. That's that's the law of God. We're going to find out. He thought to change times and the law, and this where it all fits back together. See this here? It's that prince it, that that thought to change the covenant, but we'll find out in the end. God prevails. Twenty three. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. And he shall come up and become strong with the little nation. And after this league, this, this is that covenant which they made. Remember the prince, he, come in and made, he made this alternative covenant, this different covenant. Not the covenant that God made with you in the beginning, the law. See, that's that peace covenant. He's going to work deceitfully. Lies. Lies. Deceitfully. With flatteries and, and these embellishments of, of lies. And he shall become strong with the little nation. That's with the little nation. And that God, we'll find out. God's going to make it great, 24. In the time of security shall he become even upon the fattest places of the provinces. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them prey, and spoil, and substance. Yes, he shall devise his devices against fortresses, but only until the time. And this, in this time of security, oh, it's, it's secure. They, they think it's secure. We'll find out God does this. God it does that. That's that period God's prospering the wicked. See, this time, that period of security, when they think they're all safe, everything's fine. It's in these fattest places of the province, all these goodly places, all these highest places, living off the fat of the land. That's all the good substance thereof. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. And he will scatter this prey, that spoil, that substance. That's, that's that blandishments. See, that's what comes from the lies and the flatteries that he promised. These devices that he devised. We're going to find out that it's that which makes an appalment. It's that which they lifted up. It's the lie. See, that great lie. 25. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall stir himself up to battle with the great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall devise devices against him. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against this king of the south. That, that's that part of the place God made an example of it before. God using it. It's always a witness. It's a, with a great army. And the king of the south... He shall stir himself up to battle with a great army, mighty army. And, you know, these two kings are going to fight to the very end, but we'll find out. There's one judgment for all. He shall not stand, but they shall devise these devices against him. These devices, they've, they've done devise these, these things that men make. See, they create these things, and they set them up as devices against, yes, they that eat of his food shall destroy him, and his army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. Yes, they that eat of his food, those that partake of his substance, uh, that of his table, shall destroy him. And we, we remember this, calling this all the way back to beginning. That's that assembly where those that assemble turn against him. See, turn against him, and they slay him, and many shall fall down slain. Those, all those that stand on that side, see, shall fall down slain. 27, as for both these kings, both of them, their hearts shall be to do mischief. They shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper for the end remaineth, and yet for the time appointed. 
And as for both these kings, these Molechs, their understanding shall be to do mischief. See, to do mischief, that's, that's not good. Why? Because they're men. See, and that's, God give them to rule over and to do this. This is the, the work of God. It's the judgment of God because they, they turn from God. And theirs is to speak lies at one table and to speak these lies, to uphold this. It's a lie. It's all a lie. Those of understanding already know it. But see, that you can't hold back God and his understanding. It welleth up until it finally there's a breaching and a breaking forth and a great flood. They shell these lies at one table. And this one table, one table from the beginning, see that table, that place, it's got four corners on it. That's places where they turn to God. That's the table. That was the table that we're talking about. It, but it shall not prosper. Because the end remains. See, the end. And these visions of the end, this hope of the end, it yet is for a time appointed. And that is a time appointed by God. It's a period that is appointed that God governs. 28. And he, shall, and he shall return to his own land with great substance, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do his pleasure and return to his own land. And so it was done. And return to his own with great substance, with great strength and great power. But his heart shall be against the holy covenant. His heart, all his understanding is going to be to come against this holy covenant, to break this hallowed covenant, that covenant that God made with you in the beginning. God gave you the law. You didn't have sin nobody to go get it for you. He put it in your heart, and if you can't hear it, no, God did that. But his heart is against the holy covenant. And he shall do his pleasure. 29. And at the time appointed, he shall return and come into the south. But it shall not be in the latter time as it was in the former. In the time appointed, that, that period that's appointed, that God's going to govern over, he shall return and come into the south, that parched land, that place God made a witness of before. But see, it's not going to be like it was before. It's not going to be in that latter time. That part at the end, see, that tapers off to its end. As it was before. 30. For ships of Katim shall come against him. He shall be cowed and shall return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And shall do his pleasure in Holy Covenant. And, uh, and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And shall do his pleasure. And he shall return and have regard unto them that forsake the Holy Covenant. For these ships of Katim, ships or something that sails on the sea. Ship is a vessel that is made by man to go across the great understandings of God. These of Katim. These of Katim are those of the evergreen. Uh, Katim is the plural word for Cyprus. It is a, an evergreen tree and it's what it stands for, these everlasting understandings that men try to cross the great understanding of God on. See, but God does cause the seas to roar. He shall come against him, and they sh he shall be cowed, brought down. He shall return to his own land and have indignation against this holy covenant. This hallowed covenant, once again, that's that agreement God made with you in the beginning. And God said, keep my law, obey my law, keep my covenant, and you shall live. And even in those shall a man live, all the prophets have read it. It's for the reason that they turned from it, that all this has come upon them, all the earth. He'll do his pleasure. But he'll shall return. And he's got regard for those that, that don't keep the law. He has regard for those that don't do according to the holy covenant. That hallowed covenant. That covenant, that's hallowed. It's devoted. It means you can't touch it. It belongs to God. See, you can't change it. Nobody can change it. They're men. See, this was made by God, 31. And arms shall stand on his part. And they shall profane the sanctuary, even the stronghold. And they shall take away the continual burnt offering. And they shall set up the detestable thing that causes a pummel. And arms shall stand on his part. Arms. Arms, sir. Once again, these strengths, these abilities, these, that, that which is strong. And here we're talking about the military powers. They'll stand on his part with him, see. And they, 
They profane the sanctuary. The sanctuary, that's a sanctified place. The place was sanctified. And we're talking about this sanctuary of God. See, that's because that's, that's where we're at in that sanctuary, that place of Utah where they, they defile it. They take away the continual burnt offering. That continual burnt offering, those things that made atonement, see, for that which passes through the fire, that last generation that God had to bring the judgment on. See, they didn't listen either. And the continual burnt offerings were set there to contain this, to hold it back. And they shall set up the detestable thing that causes a plummet. And this detestable thing, we know what the detestable thing is. It's an idol. It's something somebody whittled out, and it's an image that men make. It's understanding that men have these idol worshipers. And this thing is going to cause a plummet. That's that jaw dropper I've been talking about. That's that jaw dropper. When God opens your eyes and you see it, that which they've raised up, your jaw's going to drop open. God did that. God did that. And it's God's ability to open your eyes. His ability to open your ear, make you understand, make you hear. God did that. God does that. 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by blandishments. But the people that know their God shall show strength and prevail. And these that do wickedly, evil, wicked understanding that men make against the covenant, that which God made shall be corrupt by blandishments, by flatteries. Give me a cookie. Somebody got some Kool-Aid? See, because that's what's going on. Beauty. Give me some a pillow to lay on. Cover me. See, that, that, that's what's going on. They, they promise everything. They contain they have no understanding. There's nothing they can give you. God, see, gives everything. And these people that know their God, who God is, God's the God of law. He gives them all in the beginning. Shall show their strength and they will prevail. Because we'll find out in the end, that's the overall understanding of the matter. The judgment will stand. It was from the beginning. 33. They that are wise among the people shall cause the many to understand. Yet they shall stumble by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Those that are wise, those that have the ability to use knowledge. See, that knowledge is, comes from understanding. That, that is that of God. Gives you the law. The law is your understanding. Knowledge, your wisdom. See, those, they shall cause many to understand that this is all the work of God. Yet they shall stumble by the sword. That's, that's that word. That's the word, see. And by flame, by trial, judgment. This, this flame, this is that words, be these captivities that take captive, and by spoil, these, these, all this wonderful, pretty blandishments, these, these promises of spoil. Many days, see, many understandings, many understandings that shall cause them to stumble. 34, now when they shall stumble, they shall be helped with a little help, but many shall join themselves unto them with blandishments. They stumble. God, it's drunkenness. That's drunkenness when you're stumbling around there. They'll help with a little help. God helps them a little. But many shall join themselves unto them with blandishments. These with these promises of booty, these promises of things that you're going to get, these promises of things to come, all this beautiful, wonderful splendor and hope. Got a cookie? 35. Some of them that are wise shall stumble to refine among them and to purify and to make white even to the time of the end. For it is yet for a time appointed. Some of them that are wise shall stumble. They shall stumble as well. God does that, see. To refine them. To purify them. To make them white even to the time of the end. Even to that period, see, that period of the end. And that's, that's the end of all this understanding, see, because God's going to make a new beginning. Do you know God can make new beginnings? For yet is for a time appointed, and that's that, that's that period appointed, see. That's that period appointed. God's going to make a new beginning. 36. And the king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. He shall speak strange things against the god of gods. He shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. 
for that which is determined shall be done. And the king, that's the Molech, he shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself, oh, raise himself up, and magnify himself, make himself above every god, all the gods, these not a gods. God gave to rule over all the nations in the beginning, see, they didn't have no understanding who God was and just how God works, see. Do you know God give, made the not a gods rule everybody else that turned from him a long time ago? She'll speak strange things against God. God, he, God made these gods. God caused it. He's their understanding. He brought upon them, see. And he shall prosper till the indignation, till that great anger, see, be accomplished. That great anger which God's pouring out, it's the judgment of God upon all the world. For that which is determined shall be done, and the judgment shall stand. 37. Neither shall he regard the gods of his father. Neither the desire of women, nor any god, shall he regard, for he shall magnify himself above all. Neither shall he regard the gods, these not a gods God give his fathers a long time ago to rule over them, because they turned from God. Neither the desire of women. This desire of women, that is that which from man. That which is that from man, these understandings even that come from men, that's what a woman is, that come forth from man or any god these that's those images that men made that come forth from their understanding he ain't going to regard those either for he shall magnify himself above all he's going to raise himself up as the great king 38 but in his place shall he honor the god of the strongholds and the god whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold silver and his precious stones and costly things this God of the strongholds, this, well, this God of the f war, this God of battle, this God of uh, all these that creates this stronghold. And, 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 and we'll find out. It goes way back, way back. These Moleks, these Ba'as, these Lord Images, these Malcolms, these Lord Images, these things they set over them, these Malcolms, these King Images, these images of rule. And he rules. He gets himself honored. Uh, with gold, silver, those things that belong to God. Those things that have passed through the fire, these precious stones that belong to God. Costly things. In 39, he shall deal with the strongest fortresses. And with the help of a foreign God, he shall acknowledge, shall increase glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for a price. And for a price he did delight. And that's that exactor. Uh, that exactor. That set a price, set a wage upon it price waited out see it's a price that's got to be paid for redemption even this foreign god with the help of a foreign god and with the help of an understanding to come from somebody else and that's where they mingle it in a little bit there and they they go this is how they made the thing see and it causes to rule over many it causes to rule over many and they do rule over many 40 and at that time of the end shall the king of the south Push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. He shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through. At that time, that's a period, another period. It's end, at the end, there, at that, that's that the latter is what that should say, that latter portion. Shall the king, this Molech of the south, that's that place of witness, we can witness that parched land it was before push at him this king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind like a whirlwind like a storm across the desert with chariots these war machines with horsemen these men that ride in strength many ships these vessels that sail across the understandings he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through 41 and he shall enter also into the beauteous land any country shall be overthrown, but these shall be delivered out of his hand, Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall enter into the beauteous land. That, Once again, that beauteous land, that's Israel. That's, that, that's Jerusalem, that place God made an example of, been using it for, through time to make an example of, and these many countries shall be overthrown because what? God's given authority. God's handed out authority. And there is a ruler, someone ruling, but they shall be delivered out of his works, these shall be delivered, these countries, these ones here, Edom, 
Edom is red. Edom means red, and it's those that show the blood and the flesh. And Moab. Moab from her father. Moab was born, uh, Moab and Ammon are born from the ancestral relationship of Lot and his daughters. And that would be Lot and his understandings that come forth from his wife. Moab from her father. He's chief of the children of Ammon. And that's the, the head of those that come forth from the nations. 42. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Stretch forth his hand, his works also upon the countries, all these nations, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. This land of Egypt, that land of pits, snares, graves, sepulchres, holes, whatever you want to call it, traps. These things you fall into, these pits you can't get out of, 43. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. He shall have power, the abilities over, this arms over, these treasures of gold. That's that which belongs to God. And the silver, that, that which come from the last generation that passed through the fire, was purified there. These precious things of Egypt, that, those precious things, those things that Egypt used, that land of snares and graves and pets. The Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be in his steps or in his paths. Libyans are the thirsty, those that are empty-hearted. That's They're like a canteen. You need a little drink of water, and the canteen's empty. See, so you're thirsty and without these Ethiopians, and that's those of darkness. 44, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affright him, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to take away many. Tidings, a little rumor is what it should be. A little rumor is going to be heard. That's the way God always does it. A little rumor. A little rumor out of the east. A little something coming forth out of a, that way of enlightenment. A little something out of understanding coming out of there. Something out of the north. A little judgment coming forth. Going to bring a little fright upon him. And he shall go forth with great fury. Great fury is great fury. We'll find out. See, God. God strengthens. God makes weak. They, nobody got any power over God. He comes forth, though, to destroy utterly, to take away many, great fury, anger, because the battle is being lost, 45. He shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the beauteous holy mountain, and he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. And he shall plant his tents, that's his, his camp, his place of tents, those that are with him, all those that come with him, his armies. That's the place of his palace, that place where he rules from, the, between the seas and the beauteous holy mountain. That's the seas, those are the waters of the earth, those are all the understandings that come forth from God in the beginning, those that God divided, These, and the beauteous holy mountain. That beauteous holy mountain, that place where God lifted up for himself, see, that's God's holy mountain that's hallowed it's god's no others nobody else can inhabit that mountain that's that exalted place he made for himself for his name but he shall come he sets his tents between the understanding and god's holy mountain but he comes to his end there none shall help him we're going to find out in the end of judgment's going to stand god's going to rule see god's going to rule we're going to move forward to chapter 12 turn Return.